There's a fish. Right up into that, by that deadfall, right where they should be. <laughs> they get an attitude. Yeah, that is a nice walleye. fish. Pretty basic technique, but so effective. And a lot of folks are using slip bobbers on Mille Lacs. Devil's Lake's a great area to use slip bobbers, but basically whenever you have a rocky, snaggy bottom or timber or weed bed edges where if you're on the bottom and you're hung up, you can anchor in these precise spots where these fish are moving through and put good live bait in front of those spots. And early in the year, it's tough to beat. It's a very effective presentation. It's one of the things we're going to talk about on today's show. Jason Mitchell Elite Series Rods brings you the Daily Log Entry. There's a fish right there. There's a fish. Wow, this has got some shoulders on it. Try to get them out of that timber. There's a lot of different rigging options. I tell you what, when it's flat out like this, one of the things that I like to do is use just a plain hook and wacky rig the leech. And I'll show you once I land this fish here. And basically on these flat days where you don't have a lot of wind, you can really get a lot of action out of that leech where that leech will just, just squirm on a plain hook. But that's one technique. And another way, another thing that you can do is use small jigs. And just a tiny little jig will give that leech a little bit of color, which some days that can be the ticket. And also the other thing to experiment with is experiment with the length of the snails. And I'll get this fish back in the water. And a lot of times on windy days, for example, I'll use a, I'll use a snail where I'll have my hook on the bottom and then I'll have a, a snap swivel. And above that snap swivel, I'll use either a small bullet weight or a small egg sinker, okay? And what that does is a lot of times that'll cushion some of the movement from the wind. Sometimes you get too strong a waves and that presentation gets too herky-jerky early in the year where you can subdue some of that wave action by using a longer snell. So that's another little trick. I keep watching another slip bobber waiting for it to go under, but experiment with the length of the snell. When it's really windy early in the year, try a longer snell. Later on in the year, some of that up and down movement can be good when these fish get more aggressive when this water warms up. At that point, I'll either tend to use jigs more, small jigs like that. I think it's a 32nd ounce fireball, which is, has, still has that wide gap for hooking walleyes or small whistler jigs, small thumper jigs, something's got a blade on it. Sometimes that extra flash in the water can also trigger fish. I'm gonna get baited up here and get another fish. Just a size four hook. And take that leech and just go right in the middle, just like that. And we'll show you what that looks like underwater, but that leech will really be able to swim that way and they don't get as tangled up Sometimes when you just hook them through the sucker, just another option. And when you're hooking them on jigs, have a tendency to hook them through the sucker more. But that plain hook, wacky rig leech, if you're just sitting still in one spot where that leech can really swim on that hook, there aren't too many walleyes that can resist that. It's a very, very deadly hooking technique. The other thing too is watch if you can what direction those bobbers go. That'll help you learn the spot a little more. If all the bobbers are going a certain direction, you know that these fish are coming in on the spot from a certain point and they're leaving. 
So it helps you figure out the spot a little bit. This rod that I'm using is just designed just for this right here. Oh, there's a nice walleye. Nice walleye. Eight foot telescoping rod gives you a little bit of backbone for leveraging these fish. Whether you're pulling them out of the timber or just trying to set that hook if you letting the bobber drift from the boat. That's a beauty there. <laughs> That's fun. The thing I always tell my clients, you know, as a guide, with these slip bobbers, is when you set the hook, set the hook with the reel. And what I mean by that is when that bobber goes under, just crank on that reel handle until that rod loads. Don't even try to set the hook, because if you can imagine setting the hook on a slip bobber when it's 20, 30 feet away, you're just moving the bobber, so crank down on that reel handle till that rod loads, and you're gonna increase your hooking percentage dramatically. So yeah, isn't that a beauty? Tell you what, I'm gonna put this fish back in the water and grab a pliers. He's hooked pretty deep. There. Open up. Now he's barely hooked, but they all count the same. Once you get him into the boat, there we go. But what a beautiful fish right there. That's, that's why people slip bobber right there. Isn't that a beauty? Isn't that a beauty? We'll get this fish back in the water here and we'll show a few more tips on what makes this presentation so successful. All right, here. Get this rod back in the water, and there we're just wacky rigging that leech. That leech can really swim hard on that plane hook. Now, Devil's Lake, you know, we've got a lot of timber and a lot of pike, and so we're using 20 pound braid for the main line. And then a lot of times I like to use a, that egg sinker, that bullet sinker I described earlier. Now, why the bullet sinker versus split shot is you can pop this out of the net a lot faster. It doesn't get tangled up as much. Below that, just hang a mono leader. And oh, there's a fish right there. And the beauty of Whoa, isn't that fun? But yeah, these long rods let you really lay the wood to these fish when you're letting that bobber drift away from the boat. The only thing that we've done with that rod is we put a white dot every foot on the rod blank. What that enables you to do is use the rod as a ruler when you're setting the bobber stops as you're jumping from spot to spot. Another beautiful walleye. As it enables you there we go. Use the rod as a ruler so you can set that bobber stop quick. Yeah, that's, that's what we're here for right there. But that's just a beautiful fish there. And if you're less than 10 feet of water, all that ruler technique works for setting your bobber stops is, let's say you're 10 feet of water, you know that you're gonna be fishing in six, seven feet of water. You just came from a spot where you're in eight feet of water. You know, you just have to move it up a foot or two. A lot of times you jump from spot to spot, but this really speeds up your setup time, makes you a little bit more efficient when you're out on the water. And if you don't have one of our rods, you know, just take your, the rod that you're using, just put a white dot every foot. You can use tape, you can use uh, fingernail polish, but that's just a quick, easy way to adjust your rods to just make you a little bit more efficient on that setup time. There he is. That fish was way up by those trees there. You can see all this brush in front of me. That's just a perfect, perfect ambush spot for these walleyes. And people ask all the time, you know, because you check the fish reports on Devil's Lake and it's slip bobbering the timber, and there's no shortage of trees. I mean, there might be a million trees in Devil's Lake. And uh, people ask all the time, well, how do you know which, oh, look at that fish, is feisty. How do you know which tree to tie off to? And that fish swallowed it pretty good here. I'm gonna grab the pliers. But how do you know which tree to tie off to when there's so many trees? And what I like to do, let me get this fish right in the water here right away, but beautiful fish. Some great spots are anywhere that you can find that deeper water. What I mean by deep is say six to eight feet of water 
So you look at the profile of the shoreline, that deeper trough cuts up tighter to the shoreline. You find that, that those deeper lanes and troughs that kind of come in tight to the shore, that's a primo spot. And the other thing too is when you look at trees, you know, what's below the water is what counts, but a lot of times what you see above the water will give you a visual clue, but any type of tree that's got really complex root balls, branches coming off of the trees, trees with bark on them, for example, a lot of times hold more fish, but look for complex structure, good thick stands of timber with lots of branches, lots of character, and a lot of times the wall, especially the bigger walls, will key in on those spots, but why are they up there? There's a lot of invertebrates in these tree branches, a lot of freshwater shrimp that these fish are feeding on, but also these invertebrates bring in bait fish, which in turn brings in the walleyes. And so pick apart a lot of this stuff and look for the areas that are probably the highest percentage of spots. Don't try to fish all of them, you know, just make big moves and try to pick out the key locations. And not only flooded timber is a great option, but pencil reeds are really good, cabbage, any type of vegetation or timber is a great candidate for pinpoint accuracy as far as a presentation with a slip bobber. There's a fish. Let's see what we got here. Not a bad walleye. That fish hit that slip bobber so hard, you could hear it. <laughs> he didn't even have to watch the slip bobber. You could hear it. There, beautiful fish, beautiful fish. All right, well, I don't think you can deny the effectiveness of this simple presentation. It really is simple but effective and i tell you what i know if you come to devil's lake you're gonna you know chances are most of the year i mean this is a tactic that works good throughout the course of summer because whenever you have weeds or timber there's always a certain percentage of fish that are shallow and so use this presentation you know identify key areas and keep it simple put good bait in front of fish this is the reward thanks for watching this episode of jason mitchell outdoors